Hey guys, um, I just wanted to make this video to kind of address everything. Uh, if you guys watched my Elvis video, I said at the beginning of that that there was some schedule uh, rearrangement that I did, and I'm going to be going into that and to why I haven't been uploading uh the usual content that i have been and then just giving a general kind of purpose update on um, my life and the channel as a whole and basically kind of let you guys know all my opinions on certain things that have been sprouting up around on the internet that have been that i haven't been talking about myself uh, before we get to the video itself, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. No, I am not leaving. I'm not quitting YouTube. It's, it, you know, it's probably not going to happen for at least a few more years. If it ever does happen. Um, and yes, the bullet train review will still be coming out hopefully this weekend. Uh, maybe on Christmas Eve. So... We'll see how that goes, but for the time being, um, you know, I just wanted to get this video to kind of address everything that's been going on in my life and, you know, what's been going on with the channel itself. Uh, this is going to be unscripted, unedited, and just going to be my raw self, so... Um, it may, this may be a up and down spiral of a video. I may be very happy. I may be very emotional. It will just have to see, um, what, what, what happens. So let's get the, let's get the YouTube part of it out of the way and done and over with. Why haven't I been uploading the movie reviews since... Um, the Halloween special of this review of this year, which ended with my review of Halloween Six. Well, I intended on taking at least a week break away from Halloween, and obviously for my birthday. Since yes, I am now. <laughs> if you guys haven't been keeping up with my social medias, I am now officially seventeen years old. I don't feel that much different, but it's still significant. But, yeah, I was going to take a, at least a week off uh, from Halloween, like, uh, from after the, uh, the Halloween stuff for, you know, my birthday. And then get back to making, uh, you know, movie reviews and, you know, any other content that I want to make. Well, I kind of ran into a snag when I was uh, looking over my scheduling. Now... If you guys have been a part of some of my friends' streams, like uh, Dr. Elements and J Bricks and that sort of stuff, you guys may have heard me mention that uh, mention the schedule that I initially planned out for the rest of Season 6, which was really just a whole bunch of Redux reviews until Episode 150, which was a, you know, a standard movie review. Um, the... Current plan with that is I have, uh, like I said in the Elvis review, I am kind of entirely reworking that schedule. Uh, I'm still in the process of trying to figure out what I want to do for the rest of season six, since I only have the first two. I, I have the first two episodes kind of planned out, and obviously I got the Elvis review done and over with. I still need to get the Bullet Train review done, but. After that, I do not know what to do next. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I do want to cover, but um, I I don't have it per se. Like for example, I I want to do all of the Terminator movies at some point. Uh, maybe this season we'll figure it out. But I only have the first three films. I only have uh, Terminate. I, I only have the Terminator. Terminator 2 Judgment Day and Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. I don't have Salvation, I don't have Genesis, and I don't have uh, Dark Fate. And as far as I know, they're not on any streaming platforms that I currently have. So, 
that is kind of like one of my uh one of my drawbacks right now it's just like at this point i don't care whether or not i have the movie or not like bullet train i do not have it uh in my collection but it is available on netflix so i could easily just watch it through there and then still put out a review of it uh it would be better in my opinion if i had the movie but honestly at this point i don't really care uh, so, like I said, with, um, with stuff like Bullet Train, uh, if it's on a streaming service, then I will watch it, and then I'll cover it, but, uh, like in this case, with the Terminator stuff, I don't know what streaming services have, uh, you know, the remaining films that I don't have, and if I'm gonna have any of them, I mean, yeah, there's your typical, like, YouTube and, uh, Google TV, where you have to pay to have the movie, but I'm. It would just be better for me to have the convenience of just saying, "Oh, I'm gonna log on to Hulu or you know Disney Plus to have this movie or that movie right there and available to watch and go and do the review about it." So, um, if you guys have any uh, suggestions for any movies that I could possibly cover that would be available somewhat readily on a streaming service, leave it down in the comment section of this video. Although, I know that I'm probably going to get, you know, requests for certain movies that I have flat out forbade from covering to my channel. So, the one that I can immediately think of right now is the Emoji Movie. I am not covering the Emoji Movie on this channel because, just to be blown with it, it fucking sucks. And, uh, like I've mentioned before in numerous reviews, if you guys like a movie that I don't, that's fine. If I like a movie that you guys don't, that's fine. Just don't harass anyone over someone's opinion. You know, because the last thing I want is me posting a review and all of a sudden a comment war starts in my comment section because someone doesn't like either my opinion or someone else's opinion and then my video gets taken down because of it. I don't want that. So... Flat out, just gonna say it right now, I'm not gonna be covering the Emoji Movie because I know that's probably gonna happen even though I'm gonna say, you know, like, don't take anyone's opinions serious, like, don't judge anyone's opinions and don't harass anyone over those opinions. It's probably still inevitably gonna happen and I can't, I can't control that. And if it does happen, then that's probably gonna affect me more than anything else. So... I'm not going to run that risk, and plus, I've already made that point clear that I have I hate the Emoji Movie, and me just talking about it would honestly be like five minutes in a single video of just me tearing the movie to shit. So, it doesn't even feel like it's necessary for me to, to like, to cover it when I know I'm not going to, I'm just going to be sitting there ranting about the same old things over and over again. It doesn't feel right to me. So that is one I'm completely eliminating from the channel as a whole. So sorry if you guys want me to ever decide to cover the Emoji Movie. It will never happen. So yeah, but, and I know there's jokey, you know, kind of between friends of mine and shit like that where they will joke about, oh, here's this movie and it's, more often than not either i know this is gonna sound weird but like kind of movies with like racist titles that i physically cannot do because one it's probably you know it's racist for me to say and that would just cause cancel culture to be right on my ass <laughs> and two even if i were to cover them which i never will they probably won't be available on any streaming services that I ever had, you probably have, I would probably have to hunt down like a bootleg DVD of it. So, if you guys do post any of those comments, they will be deleted and they will uh, never be brought up again. And if you spam it, I will pretty much block you from the channel. It's simple as that. You know, it's it's. It, I just don't want the deal. Sorry about the lighting. It's a bit. Yeah. That should be a bit better. Um, I, I'm not going to do it. So if you guys start spamming it, I'm just going to 
pretty much banning you from the channel and simple as that but yeah if you guys have any you know suggestions for any uh for any movies that have that i have not covered on the channel please leave them down in the comment section below because i'm willing on uh talking about almost anything in terms of the channel unless it's you know like i said it, unless it's the emoji movie and it, anything racist or yes i've had one or, this is gonna sound weird i know i have even had one or two uh suggestions that were porn movies and again i cannot fit i cannot cover those so same thing with the rate like the racist title things if you post one of those they will be deleted from the channel and even if it's a joke that i'm sorry but i i i'm still not gonna allow it so like for example i'm looking at my shelf right now for example i know i already covered this but like suggest stuff like double impact or elvis like stuff like that like regular ass movies that were theatrically released and honestly i don't care when they were released like i don't I don't really care if it was like a recent movie or like an you know an older movie or like a like a 90s movie. I don't care as long as it's something that is you know everyone can relate to and you know a majority of people may have watched and you know I would feel comfortable like watching and giving my opinions out. Leave them down in the comment section below. But as I mentioned, no emoji movie, no movies with versus titles, and no porno movies because again. If you ever suggest any one of those on, you know, my social medias or, you know, my the comment section of this video or any other videos, they will be deleted from the channel. So, I'm just in that right now. But anyways, back to the reason why I stopped uploading uh, uh, movie reviews for the longest time or for the last month or two. Like I said, it was scheduling conflicts because... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I think I said that in, because I, this is not the schedule I'm going with anymore, so this is my full out, you know, you know, me explaining to you guys what the original schedule was. So after the Halloween 6 review, I would have discussed the, I would have done Redux reviews of the Jaws films. So Jaws 1, 2, 3D, and The Revenge. Then I would have gone straight into the Star Trek films. So, you know, from... The motion picture all the way to Star Trek Beyond. I I don't think I include Galaxy Quest on there. I honestly don't know why. But, but I think it was because I was running out of space within the season. That I wanted to at least... I wanted to have at least some like new uh, review out for the end of Season 6. So I decided to go with Chappie as my 150... Uh, my 150 episode. Uh, Chappie, I think, is still on the cuffs of being my 150 episode, but everything in between from uh, the Halloween 6 review to Chappie was completely redone. I moved them back because I was like, I. The, the, the thing that came up about that, especially, was um, I. It. Basically, what had happened was. Um, I. I, if it isn't obvious by the channel, uh, let me uh, brighten this a bit. Uh, that looks a bit better. All right. So, if it isn't obvious by the channel, you know, title or the channel name itself, I'm a huge Star Trek fan, and I have been for almost my entire life. Same thing as with uh, the, with the James Bond series. I've been a fan of those those two in particular, pretty much my entire life. Um, so, when I heard that they were, uh, I think last year they did a, uh, the Paramount announced that they were doing a 4K restoration of the first four Star Trek movies, and I was like, oh, sweet. So, they released them, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this box set at some point, and whatever, we'll be fine. Funny enough, like, as I was a, you know... I was actually considering buying it uh, a few months later. Paramount announces and goes, hey, we're going to be actually uh, redoing those 4K transfers 
of the first four Star Trek films and doing a 4K transfer of five and six. So I was like, okay, well, thank God I did not buy the original box set because I would probably go for this, uh, for these anyway. And if you guys haven't checked out my channel in a while, uh, I did a little unboxing review of this guy, which is the, um, the, uh, the Star Trek motion picture kind of 4K box set, which has um, all three different cuts of the motion picture, the theatrical cut, the uh, director's cut, and the uh, television version from like the early 80s. But yeah, I picked this up, you know, I think, I want to say, I'm going to check back on the video because I think I recorded that a day... I think a day after I initially got this. Um, I think I want to say mid-November I got this. Uh, because this got this re this released with the rest of the Star Trek films getting a individual 4K release as well as a Blu-ray release and a brand new box set of all of them. But uh, I didn't I didn't want to go for the box set because that didn't include the television version on a you know as an HD transfer. That only included the theatrical and the director's cut. So I was like, okay, I'll get the the motion picture box set, and I'll get the rest of them individually. Then I'll probably get, uh, I'll probably make like a custom 4K case for the motion picture, and that was fine. Obviously, uh, at the time of me recording this video, it is the 20th of December of 2022, and um. We're at, obviously we're five days away from Christmas, so I uh, <laughs> I put on my Christmas list that I wanted to get the remaining Star Trek films on 4K, as well as a uh, a 4K player so I can actually you know play 4K uh, discs and a 4K TV because surprisingly this TV back here which uh, wasn't the same one that I used uh, prior. For the last, I want to say, the la at least the last few months, this TV is not 4K. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, I had, you know, the schedule planned out along with the Christmas list. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get the, the Star Trek 4Ks and then the player and then the TV. And then we'll continue on and I'll finally get to see these films in 4K. Then I thought, realistically, and I'm like actually let's step back a bit and realistically think about this out of anything i'm probably either going to get one or the other like i'm going to get either all the star trek films or i'm going to get like the 4k player or the tv like you know not like <laughs> not like all of them at once so i was like okay let's dial this you know let's let's think about this for a second and that was when i kind of was like okay Let's rework the schedule a bit, and um, let, let, let's see how this goes. So that's why I kind of revamped everything. I I I, I kind of pretty much took down everything from the original set list from se for season six, except for Chappie, because that was um uh, that that's at least on Netflix, and I've already seen the movie before, so. If not, you know, if I, if I don't get to watch it again, I can at least just recall my memories for that and then just write the script out from that. So Chappie was pretty easy to go from. And again, like I said, I could easily just rewatch it on Netflix or if not, I could easily, I've seen the movie before, so I can easily just, um, you know, work a script around that. But for pretty much all of them, I mean, the Jaws, uh, the Jaws sequels and the Next Generation uh, films, I did, they didn't really matter if I had a 4K player or not, because those, I, at this point, I've only been released on Blu-ray. I have the, the J.J. Abrams Star Trek films, I have Star Trek, uh, I have Star Trek on 4K, and then, I think I mentioned this before, like a year ago, but my Star Trek Into Darkness 4K copy only has the second Blu-ray disc, which has all the special features, because apparently the little jewel case thing that goes in the middle fucking broke off and now i only have that so 
that's kind of pissing me off, but at least I have it uh, on digital. So again, I can easily just watch that, and I have a Blu-ray copy of it, that as well. But, yeah. So, I... I reworked everything, and as I was reworking it, um, some other things came up on the channel, which you guys may have seen, and I will be talking about those uh, later on. But those things came up, and I was like, okay, well, let's, you know, let's at least put some videos up instead of just me disappearing again. So that's why you got those reaction videos that I did for pretty much the entirety of uh, November, and fuck, that scared me. Uh, if you guys didn't know, because this is, this is basically kind of, uh, like a, you know how, like, bookends kind of, you know, work on a bookshelf? This was basically it for my 4K section, and most of them just fell over, and that scared the crap out of me, because I didn't even see it. But anyway, anyway, I was like, um, you know, uh, so, th so that's why you guys saw all those reaction videos that I, I made throughout, um, Basically, the entirety of of, uh, of November and partially into December. Because, you know, I didn't really know what to do for Season 6. So, um, but now I have at least a two... Uh, I at least have two videos to start off the, the rest of the year with. And uh, I'm still trying to work out the rest of Season 6. But like I said, if you guys have any suggestions for movies I could possibly cover... Uh, leave them down in the description below. Just um, at the time, just basically eliminate everything uh, for the last 130 episodes, and then also eliminate Elvis and Bullet Train because I'm gonna be covering those. So basically, um, once this video goes live, just try and post any movie that I could possibly cover uh, in the comment section, and I will see if I can try and work something out. But anyway. Um, that's pretty much about it for the YouTube section of this video. Basically, I was just trying to figure out what to do for season six as I was making content. Uh, now I have a starting off point, but I don't know exactly where to go. Uh, my plan at the time of this, <clears throat> at the time of this recording for my plans of uploading videos for season six is to have one to come out every single week until I finish season six. So obviously starting with Elvis last Saturday, I think. Uh, starting with Elvis, and then this Saturday, Christmas Eve, we're gonna do Bullet Train. And then once I figured out a schedule, I'll be uploading a video every single week. Uh, this is obviously gonna go into the new year. So we're, I think we're at least gonna be going if this works out, we're going to be at least going into, like, March or April with, um, uh, with video uploads, at least for movie reviews. Uh, in terms of other content, I don't exactly know, uh, what the deal is for that, but, yeah. So, yeah, that pretty much covers it for the YouTube aspect for this video. The rest of this video will basically be me covering, um, basically topics that have sprouted up on the internet that, um, I wanted to get my opinions out on that I didn't, that I either never covered at all or didn't really go into depth about it. Uh, certain of these things, that, uh, some of these things I, I will be talking about, I have mentioned on my social media pages, my Instagram, face, my Facebook, my Twitter. Stuff like that. So, if you guys want to know my initial thoughts on them, you can check out them, uh, my thoughts on those in the description below. And I'll mention them as the video goes on. Uh, but, uh, we're going to be talking about, really, uh, some... Um, some some Blu-ray releases first. Um, and then we're going to be talking about some movie and... Like, just general movie and TV announcements and releases... That again, I haven't, I haven't talked about that much, but I will be addressing in this video. So this be this could be a very long video, but I got, was I was kind of anticipating this. But let's get into this. So to start off with the Blu-ray topic of uh, the, the Blu-ray section of this video, 
there were a few things that uh, certainly caught my eye within the last few months that have been either announced or rumored to be coming out. And uh, the first and, in my opinion, most important one, or the one that caught my eye the most, was uh, a little statement from uh, Warner Brothers that started, I think, back in early November of this year. Uh, and that, that later got clarified in a statement that Warner Brothers themselves announced uh, a week or two ago. But basically what had happened was uh, some some uh, media site uh, that does, you know, uh, that gives up the latest news on Blu-ray releases, uh, they announced that Warner Brothers have confirmed that they were going to be uh, doing 4K remasters of the rest of the Christopher Reeves Superman movies. You know, Superman 2, Superman 3, and Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Now, um, my current uh, situation with that, in terms of the Christopher Reeves Superman movies, if I'm going to grab them all right now, or really just Superman movies in general, is that, um, here. Yeah. So... Obviously, we had, um, back in 2018 for the 80th anniversary of Superman in general and the 40th anniversary of Superman movie, we had the four, the initial 4K, uh, release. And, um, you know, I, I picked this up, I think, either the same year that this came out or in 2019. Now, I thought that people were actually really, um either really they were initially obviously really excited for this release but then um when the, the disc uh came out i heard that people were actually you know pretty proud of what the 4k remaster was and they gave it high amounts of praise and you know um you know and you know it it seemed like this was the definitive way that we were going to view Superman. But, um, with the announcement of these 4K transfers of the sequels, they also announced that they were going to be doing a, um, a, a remaster 4K of, you know, Superman the movie, which <laughs> caught me a little bit off guard, if I have to be honest, because... I thought that they were just going to kind of um, push more copies of this 4K release when the sequels got announced, or when they got released. But I guess now they're doing a completely new transfer, and um, we'll be putting out this new 4K transfer um, when the sequels come out. So technically, this, this disc right here that I'm holding is kind of obsolete, which kind of pisses me off, but I guess it's, you know, uh, it, it, it's a nice relic to have now until, and when the four, when these new 4K transfers come out. But I'll, I'll still be keeping this, honestly, because, you know, I think this was honestly one of the first 4K titles I ever got. So this, this title does hold kind of a special place in my heart. As being one of the first tiles I ever picked up on 4K. Um, if you guys haven't seen what this, you know, looks like. Um, that's what it, you know, kind of looks like. Um, and if you guys want to know any specifics, I'm not going to go that much into depth about them. And plus, people have, you know, made videos about, you know, going super into depth about them. Including, you know, Oliver Harper and, you know, several... Um, you know, Blu-ray channels like uh, the Films at Home did a video on this when it initially came out. But, yeah. But, uh, from what I've seen in terms of this transfer, because this, obviously this, co this did come with a digital code. So, I checked out the digital version of this, and it looked really good in my opinion. There were a couple shots that I was like, eh, they could have been better. But overall, I was amazed by it. And I know, and I know, like, streaming doesn't really count, uh, it doesn't really hold up to the same quality as actually playing a 4K disc. I know that, but 
from what I've seen, this was a, you know, it was a great transfer. Um, but as far as I know, the the Blu-ray disc that is included with this is the old transfer from like the mid 2000s. So it's not the new 4K transfer, which kind of sucks considering the, uh, which means that I can't really, you know, watch it until I get a 4K player. But I guess, like I said, that's kind of obsolete now. Um, uh, concerning the fact that this is, you know, going to be obsolete, but yeah. So we had, you know, um, we've had the 4k release of the, of Superman, the movie. Then we got this, uh, this Blu-ray release, which is the, uh, the TV cut of Superman, the movie, which was released, you know, on a, you know, double Blu-ray with this, the uh, special edition, which I think think I'm not sure if the um if the uh if the tran if the disc on here for the special edition is the same that we got um is uh is is a new transfer that we got or kind of like an up just an upscale version of the DVD but yeah uh but you know, obviously we did get, we, we finally got the, you know, the, the TV version, uh, as a, you know, on a Blu-ray disc. Then we, back in 2016, they had not, uh, they released all the Superman and, or I think it's, it was either 2015 or 2016 that they released all of the, uh, like the, the 80s and 90s Superman and Batman movies in commemoration for Batman v Superman. Uh, I didn't pick up the, um... The 2016 releases of the Batman films, since I already got the 2010 releases for those. But I did pick up the 2016 releases for both Superman 3 and 4, which were actually relatively... Uh, well, I actually found Superman 3, surprisingly enough, at a Winco for like 5 bucks. So, obviously, I couldn't pass that up. Then, I actually found this... Uh, I found Superman 4 on Amazon going for like 10 bucks. Grandly, it was from a... Um, from a, uh, like a third party seller on there, but it, you know, it is the disc from the, uh, the, uh, the box set that came out in 2006, so, seems legitimate to me, and obviously, you know, uh, same thing for Superman 3. Now, unfortunately, I did not get the, uh, the 2016 release for Superman 2. Because it kind of seems like that they never released one. As far as I know. Because I, and no joke, I did try and, like, I tried to track down this release. I found a, let's see, because um, Blu-ray.com uh, said that there was a, a 2016 release for Superman 2 that had this kind of cover style. And, obviously, if I had a little bit more editing tricks, I would probably pop up the image of what it looks like. Um, but it was kind of, like, in the same style. But, and they said they gave a release date uh, of, like, when it came out, which was the same date as these two. And, obviously, all the Batman ones and Superman, like, the Superman the movie one. But I could never find it. I found a, I think it was a German imp import. Oh, no, 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 it was a Japanese import, and then, uh, I think the Japanese import used the cover art from the original, like, 2001 DVD versions, which was a bit surprising, but I was like, okay, and then the, and then there was another foreign release, I think it was, um, fuck, I'm trying to remember, I think it was either UK or Australia release, and that used the 2006 cover art. So I was like, no, I don't really know, but at the time of this recording, I do not have a Blu-ray version of Superman 2 at all. I don't even have the Richard Donner cut. And yet I fucking have Superman Returns as a Blu-ray disc, which, eh. <laughs> I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of this movie, but it's not bad. It's just straight up average. But anyway. Uh, that, so that was my current situation with Superman on Blu-ray, was that I pretty much had all the Christopher Reeve Superman movies, 
on Blu-ray, but just not the second one. And then, you know, obviously Warner Brothers came and announced and, uh, well, they, they, someone leaked and said that they were doing a, um, that, that Warner Brothers was supposedly doing a 4K transfer of the Superman sequels. And I was like, okay, this could be very, this could be very exciting if this is true, because... The way that the email, or the, the way that the, the the article kind of explained it, it kind of seemed like they were, even they were, like, unsure about it. They were, like, the because at that point there was no release date, except for, I think, Amazon.uk had a listing for Superman 3 on 4K, and they had a release date for, I think, April 3rd of next year. So, there was speculation of it being a... <clears throat> A April 2023 release. But that was just it. It was just rumors. Uh, it seemed like it was true. Considering the fact that it was like a major. You know. Uh, website that. that you know a, a major Blu-ray website. That you know. Gave this information out. And not some you know. Like one person on Facebook saying. Oh you know. Then you know they're coming out. And you, stuff like that. And so it seemed legit. But we just didn't know if it was 100% confirmed. Then in like the first or second week of December, Warner Brothers did a uh, posted a an article on their own site for the 100th anniversary of Warner Brothers, basically going over the history, and you know how you know what films they made and you know how you know they you know basically how they thrived as a as a movie business. Then they gave out uh, a little short a short snippet of what will be coming out as a you know, kind of a tribute to their 100th anniversary. And they mentioned that they, they were going to do, they, this was the, this was kind of like their final, like the actual confirmation that they were going to be doing Superman 4Ks. Because they, all they said in the, in the post was that they were going to do a five film Superman collection that had uh, Superman in the movie, Superman 2, Superman 3, Superman 4, and Superman 2, the Richard Donner cut. So there was, and the Richard Donner cut was also kind of confirmed in the in the initial article that I mentioned earlier, but they were rumoring when um, there was rumors when uh, Warner Bros. might be making this announcement that Superman Returns would begin a 4K release, but uh, with you know uh, more uh, Blu-ray uh, websites and uh, YouTubers. Now officially confirming that no, they will be not doing a 4K uh, remaster of Superman Returns at this point. Which is kind of a shame considering the fact that the Blu-ray transfer for Superman Returns is, for Superman Returns is uh, kind of shite. <laughs> it's the Blu-ray transfer because this was, let me check the release date. This might be, uh, okay, 2006. So this was right when Blu-ray was... Um, you know, you know, right when Blu-ray was starting to become a thing. So, they didn't really know how to, I guess, they didn't really, they didn't really know how to make, do transfers for them, and because of that, the transfer for Superman Returns just came out, uh, like, muddy, and, you know, had, like, like, a lot of browns where they should have been, you know, more, like, red, you know, stuff like that. So, this was kind of a disappointing transfer, but this is all we really had. So we were kind of hoping that, you know, Superman Returns will finally get, you know, a loving restoration. But at this point, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Um, but yeah, so, but I'm still glad that they're going to be doing the Christopher Reeve films as 4Ks. Because we obviously, we already had the first one, so it kind of just seemed like they left out all the other ones. But at least we're finally, you know, we're finally going to be having all of them on 4K. Superman Returns can wait, and obviously we had, um, we had Man of Steel, we had, uh, basically from Man of Steel onwards, we've had pretty much every single Superman movie in 4K, at least mainstream. I think we got some of the animated ones on 4K, I think we got, like, Death of Superman, uh, Reign of the Superman, like, like some of the DCAU stuff, or DCEU, uh, animated stuff, but... In terms of their live action stuff, since Man of Steel, they have done um, 
uh, all um, they've done all of them. So they just now they decided to go back and doing the Christopher Reeve stuff, which I'm glad to. But that's not all they announced in that uh, in that initial post. They also mentioned that they were going to be doing a 4K restoration for The Exorcist and Enter the Dragon, which uh, will be the 40th anniversary for both of those next year. And they go on to mention that they are doing at least a dozen titles, including those ones. So I'm like, okay, this sounds interesting because they're doing a, a dozen. I, well, we don't even know how many they're doing, but at this point, they have confirmed that they're, they're at least doing 12 titles for their 100th anniversary in 2023. And we already got confirmed the, uh, the Superman films. And the Exorcist and Enter the Dragon. So that is realistically, um, if we're counting both versions of Superman two, so that's already you gotten already half of the the titles announced. Or, uh, because we gotten over it, so now we have another five titles that they have not announced yet. So I'm honestly really excited what Warner Brothers has uh, to put out because. With some exceptions, <clears throat> Batman, <clears throat> their 4K output has been really good. Not up to par with, say, Era Video or Vinegar Syndrome, but for, for major studios, they've been doing very good. With, again, some exceptions, <clears throat> Batman. <clears throat> Sorry, I, I think I coughed and said, uh, like, Batman, like, uh, like, Batman 89, 4K transfer. Um, uh, <laughs> but yeah. I'm really excited to uh, to see what uh, Warner Brothers have to announce for their 100th anniversary of 4K stuff. And, you know, obviously with the, the initial titles that they announced, I'm really excited for what they have. And I might honestly be picking up all of them, including The Exorcist at some point. So, really excited for those ones. Next up for 4K, uh, for 4K uh, announcements, uh... Kind of around the same time that we got the Superman uh, rumors going around, there was also rumors. Or the they announced, uh, I think it was Warner Brothers again. Uh, it was either them uh, or Twenty. I forgot who announced it. It was some major company. But we are getting 4K releases in. I think I want to say I think February or March of 2023 we are getting the first four rocky movies in 4k and you know i'm obviously you know really excited because i'm a huge rocky fan as well so seeing and at this point i only have let's see i think i only have one four and the first creed on blu-ray so and I've, I've seen i've seen pretty much all of the the rocky movies per se uh, I, I've seen pretty much all of them up until Balboa, and then I watched, I watched Creed, and obviously I haven't watched Creed two, and obviously th Creed three is coming out, so I think it's, I think it's just they're trying to do um, sorry my arm's itching, um, I think they're just kind of just cashing in on C the Creed hype, so they're gonna do four K, um, restorations of the first four Rocky films, which is, it it, it, it is exciting. But I can only wonder why they they're not doing Rocky Five or Rocky Balboa because those, not saying they they need a 4K transfer, but if you're gonna do if you're gonna go as far as to do the first four Rocky films, might as well do Rocky Five and Rocky Balboa. Like it only just seems right. But alas, we are at this point not. They haven't announced that they're doing Rocky V or Rocky Balboa. We just we only know that we're getting the first four Rocky films on 4K. And I think someone uh, apparently leaked some screenshots of um, the uh, what what the covers would ass assuming you know these are factual. Uh, these are probably what we're gonna get. And the the post also said that we're going to get the director's cut of Rocky 4, which is, you know, 
Now that that is, if that is the case, I am really excited because I haven't actually seen the director's cut for Rocky IV yet. So, you know, this will be the first time for me to see it. Uh, I've already obviously watched the theatrical cut and it's cheesy as hell, but I still love it. So, seeing this Rocky, this this version of Rocky IV, which apparently is supposed to be a more serious interpretation of the film, I'm really excited to see it. But yeah, so for my my biggest anticipations are obviously the Superman 4Ks and then the Rocky 4Ks. Uh, that's pretty much about it for the Blu-rays. Um. The rest of them are just going to be uh, general movie and TV show stuff. Um, so, <clears throat> so we, um, if you guys have seen, I checked out videos on my channel for, like I said, most of November and, or pretty much all of November and partly into December, I did a lot of reaction videos for the channel. Uh, which were on... Well, I did one unboxing video, which was for this guy. Then I reacted to both trailers for the Super Mario Brothers movie. And then I reacted to the teaser that uh, for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Now, if you guys want to go and see my initial thoughts on those, go and check out those videos. Uh, they'll, pro they'll be up on the end card. Um, but... Um... I'll just reiterate my thoughts on those two. Uh, let's start off with the Super Mario Bros. movie, since that is probably get the that's getting the most amount of hype right now in terms of upcoming stuff and not stuff that has released yet or that has released as of now. So, my thoughts on the Super Mario Bros. movie so far, I really, really like what what it looks like it's going to be. And obviously, with the uh, the game, I think it was the Game Awards that uh, showed off the first actual clip from the movie that we got, which was the Mushroom Kingdom, wow, Mushroom Kingdom setting, or a Mushroom Kingdom scene where we Toad is kind of introducing Mario to, you know, the Mushroom Kingdom, showing like the bank, like how, how they bank things, and then uh, like the tr like the transportation system, and you know, I thought I found that scene charming, and I really. That really just only makes my anticipation for the movie even higher because now actually seeing a clip from the movie and not, you know, a trailer, this just makes my anticipation, you know, like I said, it it just rises so much more because it was, it, 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 it's, it seems good. It, it really does seem like, you know, obviously we, we joked about Chris Pratt being Mario and how, you know, it seemed like such a shite idea. But, obviously, after hearing his voice in both, you know, in both trailers and in this clip, it really does seem like that this could work, at least, for one film. And, uh, honestly, this is probably going to be a huge success, which is going to warrant a sequel, probably. So, I'm, I'm excited to see what the film turns out to be. And even if it is a disappointment, I'm honestly not going to be that surprised considering the fact it's made by Illumination, who have done shite like the Despicable Me films, the Minion films, and I think they also did the Emoji movie. So their track record was not that good. But this could be the film that really really, you know, kind of launches them back into the mainstream and shows that we can make good stuff. So, you know, I, I'm excited to see what the what the Mario movie has in, has in store for all of us. And I will be, hopefully, uh, doing a reaction when I see it for the first time, hopefully in theater, in theaters. So, we'll see. Next, we have uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which obviously I made a video about. And what do I think about the trailer? It seems good. It does, I feel like, go overboard with the CG effects, which kind of does taint what the movie could possibly be like. But I'm excited to see at least one more 
uh, Avenger with Dr. Jones. There's really not much for me to go off of since we only have the teaser right now. And, um, you know, we, we don't, I don't know if we have an exact release date for at least a, another trailer, but we do have an official release date for when this new Indiana Jones movie is coming out, and that is apparently June 30th of next year. So, I'm excited to see what they what they could possibly do. Honestly, I'm just hoping for anything that's at least slightly better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I mean, grandly, it's not the worst film I've ever seen, but it is certainly the worst out of all the Indiana Jones movies, and it is it's it is a bad movie, but that that can warrant its own review at some point. Um, maybe for maybe for season six, we'll see. Um, now let's go on to stuff that has been released and uh, that I've made posts about, and uh. You know, not counting the not not counting the movies I'm doing for the show because I'm already discussing my opinions in those videos. So realistically, I only have one more thing to talk about, and then I'm gonna end this video off. Um, because there there hasn't been really much going on. Uh, in terms of actual release stuff that I know people were going to start asking me about, except for one. And that was uh, Netflix's new show, Sonic Prime. Now, um, I, uh, I was, I've been following the, the show from the, from the concept art that was being released to the trailers that were being released to its initial uh release date and i actually already had a sneak peek to what the um what the the show might have been like because roblox was holding an, uh, a special event on sonic speed simulator where they were going to premiere the uh the pilot uh for sonic prime uh i think i think it was december 10th they were uh they were premiering the first episode uh and obviously the series wouldn't come out until December 15th. So I got to watch the first episode a few days early. And my initial thoughts were on it were, this is actually really, really good. And then obviously the series came out on uh, December 15th. And ironically, that that fell on a Thursday for me. Uh, which, uh, I'm not going to go too much into depth about it, but my current school schedule means that I don't have any school on Thursday. So I got to pretty much binge watch all of season, uh, all of Sonic Prime within a two hour span. So, because I already watched the first episode and I rewatched it on Sonic uh, Speed Simulator about, I actually want to say about four times. So I kind of had my opinions on the first episode already. So I was like, what's the point of me watching it again? So I was like, start with episode 2, go on to the rest of it. But my overall opinions on the series, I really enjoyed it. It was a it was a nice romp through, you know, a different universe for Sonic. And uh the the different worlds that we go to are honestly really enjoyable. Obviously, the first one was like the futuristic kind of a New York city, you know, clever play on words there, which we actually spend the, I think the first three episodes on. Then we go to uh, kind of this forest kind of world for like an episode or two. Then we go back to New York City and then we finally end up with uh, this kind of pirate world and then we... Uh, end the show on a cliffhanger, uh, you know, where Shonic, Sonic and Shadow are fighting in this kind of, you know, um, oh, if it wasn't obvious enough by me discussing the show, spoilers, um, but yeah, the, the series, season one ends with, uh, Sonic and Shadow kind of fighting in this Kind of like if you're like a uh, kind of think about uh, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, uh, where uh, he, they're kind of like uh, fighting in like these uh, this kind of like 
I guess like kind of junction thing of dimensions. Kind of think of like that. Uh, and I was like, wow, they really ended it on the cliffhanger and I so want to see more. Thankfully, the creators have announced that there, even though there isn't a specific release date for a second season, they have already worked on uh, scripts and I think I've already started on animation and voice work for season two. So we are, we are most likely going to get a season two at some point. I'm gonna say at least sometime in late, uh, sometime late next year. Uh, considering the fact that you know it's probably gonna take a while, even though Sonic Prime as a whole only has eight episodes, which I'm, I was kind of surprised about. I thought they were gonna at least do ten episodes, but surprisingly not. But overall, I did enjoy Sonic Prime, and I highly do recommend you guys check it out. It is on Netflix. I think it is an actually, like I said, it is a Netflix show. So, uh, unless the Sonic YouTube channel posts them on uh, on YouTube, uh, which I highly doubt. But yeah, the only way you can really watch them is through uh, is uh, is through Netflix. But I highly do recommend it. And if you don't like it, that's fine. I, I'm just saying it is it is a good divergence from a typical Sonic story that. We may all know. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, there is technically one more thing that came out this year that I never really discussed much on the channel. And it is kind of an important part of my life. Um, so, who... Uh, a question for everyone. Obviously, this is going to take a little bit for everyone to answer. But, who here remembered Ninjago? And as soon as I'm saying that, you guys probably already know where I'm going with this. But, actually, within the last year or two, I've actually been getting back into Ninjago, considering that I've... I dropped out of the series uh, after Season 2 concluded. I never watched any of the next few seasons, starting with Season 3. I think I watched... I tried to watch one episode of Season 3, and I just gave up on it. Then... Uh, I didn't get back into it, uh, until, um, until, uh, they, uh, nin uh, Ninjago were promoting for both the island and, uh, Seabound. So I was like, okay, why well, are you have a Netflix account? And surprisingly enough, they have all of the seasons up until that point on Netflix. Uh, you know, seasons one, uh, seasons one through ten, and then, um... Secrets of Forbidden Spinjitsu, uh, Prime Empire, Master on the Mountain, and uh, yeah, and that's it at, at, at that point. So I binge watched pretty much all of it, and I was like, okay, I'm back into Ninjago. Watched all of the island, watched all of Seabound when both of those came out, and then we got announced that we were doing the, the we were getting a final, you know, a final season with the current cast called Ninjago Crystallized. Unfortunately, they split it up into two parts. The first part I watched basically when it came out. And, um, uh, it, um, I liked it. I thought it was a good start to the series, but I wouldn't call it, like, like I thought it was a pretty mediocre season. Um, real quick cut. And I'm back. Um, sorry about the knocking. That was just uh, it's a family of mine that were trying to ask me something. Anyway, back to uh, Ninjago Crystallize. I when I watched part one, I was like, okay, this is this is good, but it, I wouldn't consider this one of my favorite seasons. But then season two, or not season two, part two came out a few months ago now, and holy shit. Shit, this blew my mind. Honestly, we rewatching now all of Crystallized Parts One and Two. It may be my favorite Ninjago season of all time, which is saying something considering the fact that for the longest time, my favorite Ninjago season was season ten, March of the Oni, which ironically enough ended Ninjago already. But like. Any, everything that March of the Oni did, I feel like that 
Crystallized did better. And it really... It really did seem like that it was, you know... <laughs> it, it, it was, um... It, it really did seem like it was a finale to, um, to, to, to Ninjago. And I, I won't lie, this, uh, when I watched it initially, part two, I fucking choked, I choked up at the end. Like, it, it got to me. Um, obviously on, you know, subsequent reviewings, uh, or on subsequent viewings, um, it's the the impact is not as strong as it would, or as as it was. Uh, but I, I still I still feel sad that you know. Um, you know, these these characters aren't you know, gonna be leading the series anymore, and it 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 felt like a solid goodbye, that you know, that I thought that March of the Only did okay. Uh, like I thought it did good back then, but now looking at it, with the you know with crystallized now, it you know doesn't even compare nowadays. Although it is still a very good send off, crystallized just beat it in every sense. So yeah, uh, thoughts on Ninjago crystallized? It's one of the best seasons ever, if not my favorite. Um. You know, still, you know, at least, I would say at least in top five, along with, you know, March of the Oni, Tournament of Elements, and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. And I will probably be doing a ranking, a tier ranking video of all of the Ninjago seasons, but uh, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, if you guys want to know kind of like my rankings on all of the Ninjago seasons, uh, on the Ninjago seasons, I'd be. I conveniently made a list on all my ranking of all the Ninjago seasons on my letterbox page, which is also down in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, and actually, I'm that now thinking about it, there's been there's one more thing, and I mentioned Mister. This is the last thing I'm going to be talking about, and then I'll I'll end the video here. Uh, this is kind of a more uh, recent announcement, and. Well, oh, I this I might actually <laughs> I might start getting emotional at this point, but yeah. So kind of the same thing with Ninjago. Who who remembers Pokemon? <laughs> um, obviously you know it was a video game series that got turned into an anime back in nineteen ninety eight. Jesus, but yeah, I I I grew up with Pokemon, or is it? I say Pokemon, but yeah. I grew up with it, and I watched the anime from pretty much ever since I could actually watch a TV. Unfortunately, I think I started off actually with the Black and White series, which is regarded as the worst out of at least the anime stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I started off with Black and White, then moved to X uh, XY, watched almost all of it. And then Sun and Moon came out, and I kind of just distanced myself away. I still was, you know, interested in the games, and then when news came up for the show. But I just never, I wasn't actually watching it on a, you know, a weekly basis. And then, uh, you know, not to go into spoiler territory if you guys haven't seen it, but, you know, if you guys know, you know. So we were like, okay, well, is Ash going to return for the next series? And sure enough, he was for Pokemon Journeys. Now we've had the we tend to we've had the finale to Pokemon Journeys, and Ash, again, well spoilers for uh, anyone who hasn't seen it, but um, Ash has become the master. He he has become the ultimate master. That you know he's wanted for. All of his life and you know now I'm you know everyone was, once that dropped we were like okay well what now like you know he's he's become the champion like he's become the thing that he all he's always wanted to become 
where can the story go from there? Well, um, <laughs> now we got confirmation that there will be a 11 episode epilogue to Ash's story that will be starting January 11th of next year. So, if you guys don't really get it, which is surprising if you guys aren't, they are they are finally retiring the character. After over 20 years, they are finally retiring the character. And um <laughs> I I knew this day was going to come at some point obviously, but it's 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 kind of like a Ninjago Crystallite sort of thing where it's like I just can't believe that it's actually happening, and I've gone I, I I've gone over Ninjago like I'm obviously still sad that you know that's a you know that was reality that that was that's happening to Ninjago, but like I'm I'm over that if that makes sense like I still feel emotional for it, but like I'm not like guilt ridden at that because of it. This is still relatively recent at the time of me recording this which again is december 20th this was this was announced like at least three to five days ago like this is um this is still crazy to think about and um it, it's 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 certainly a shock when i learned about it <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but you know, it 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 would only seem fair that they you know he finally you know he finally accomplished his dream after all of these years. It would just seem kind of fucked up that they would just do you pull a black and white and just go you know make him to a kind of a dumbass and just make him forget everything that he learned from you know journeys. So. In that sense, I'm glad that they're finally just saying, you know what, we're we're done. Like he he has accomplished his goal, he has become the thing that he wants to that he wanted to become all these years. Let's give him the send off that he truly deserves. But it obviously doesn't, you know. It doesn't help that it still fucking hurts. Uh, but, you know, it is um. It is, uh, it's, it's real, all right, and it, it, there, there, there are so many videos that go into depth about, you know, what, you know, well, about, you know, because they, they released the poster designs, uh, which, ho uh, homage to the original Japanese poster, art, uh, poster back in, like, 1996, 97, which, that, that, that like if like the rumors didn't already like kind of clarify it this was the nail on the head basically saying yeah his his character arc is over like we are we are we're done with him and um you know it's uh it's certainly emotional but um uh, I, I certainly will not forget all the memories that I had of watching Pokemon and Ninjago for all these years and, you know, it finally coming to an end. I mean, obviously, both will still be continuing with new protagonists, especially in Pokemon's case, because they already dropped images of what the, uh, the new, uh, the new protagonists look like, and... It's not bad, but I, I'm not trying to sound like a dick by saying this, but I don't know if I, I can really watch the show without actually, like, he has connected to me so much over the years that at this point, it, it wouldn't seem like the Pokemon anime to me without him. And now knowing that he is, you know, no longer going to be there, it, you know, it, 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 it really does it, it hurts 
Um, I did not mean to end this on kind of like a, a, like a sad note, but like, I, you know, I have to let, you know, like, I, like, I want to get my opinions out on these things, and it's like, I, I'm bringing this onto myself, even though, like, it's, it, it fucking hurts, but it, it, uh, you know, it, it, I, it feel, it would feel wrong to me not letting you guys know how I felt about this, about these certain things, so, at least, you know, you know, at least have it out to the public and instead of just keeping it inside and letting it tear you apart. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, that ends it for this, uh, for this, for this video, really. Uh, like I said, this was unscripted, un well, there's gonna be a bit editing now since I have to, you know, do this quick cut. But, um,. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> this is probably going to be me at my rawest on the channel. Because before, you know, I'm obviously, you know, either pulling off, you know, pretty much either, you know, the entirety of my my channel within the last two years has been me pulling off as a critic. And I haven't been really been able to show off who myself is. So, this is, this is, you know, myself. Um, this is just my raw self, and, uh, in terms of announcements, really, um, if I really have any, well, besides the fact just, you know, stay tuned for the Bullet Train review coming out this Saturday, um, I want to get connected with you guys, you know, in some way, because obviously, Movie reviews, you know, aren't for everyone, and obviously, you know, that isn't really myself. That's me putting on a caricature of myself. So, that, you know, doesn't really seem right. Um, so, I want... I've been... I've been a gamer for pretty much my entire life, really. Ever since I've been able to pick up a... Since I've been, ever been able to pick up a controller and understand how it works, and the, ever since the first time I played Super Mario Brothers on the All Stars Collection on my Super Nintendo, I've been a gamer ever since then, and I've wanted to express myself in that way for years, but I haven't been really able to express myself through that, except for my cringy cringy ass minecraft let's plays all the way back in 2016 like ugh, like those were so bad i mean i could probably realistically make videos nowadays about gaming uh but with the current equipment that i have right now it would probably be laggy as fuck and you know realistically i could probably only do like two games uh Thinking about it, honestly, I could probably only do, like, Minecraft and Roblox. I could, I, I mean, granted, I have Gary's Mod on this computer, but it kind of runs like shit. So, you know, trying to get a video up for Gary's Mod would probably be practically impossible for me right now. But, if you guys are willing to see gaming content in some way on my, ch on my YouTube channel, because I do gaming content on my Twitch page. I stream really just Fortnite games since, or no, Xbox games since, I don't know if you can see it kind of right there, that's my Series S, and that's been the only way that I've been able to stream video games, because YouTube decided to be, you know, dumb and say that I violated some of their mobile live streaming rules back when I used to do live streams like 2018, 2019. So now I can't mobile live stream until I hit a thousand subscribers. But the thing was is that I, you know, I wasn't mobile live streaming. I was legit recording. I was doing a live stream on this exact same computer that I have right here recording this video on. So YouTube was just being dumb and basically just restricting me for nothing. And now I... I have to wait now 
until I hit that milestone to get, you know, somewhere with this. And, um, it, it sucks. Like, it, it sucks because it's like the one opportunity that I can get to live stream on YouTube, I can't because, you know, some business head fuck decides to screw me over when everyone else, when other people are doing things 10 times more wrong than I did. So, it, it sucks, but that's what, that's what I have to live with right now. So, if you guys are willing to see gaming content on this channel, I'm more than happy to do it. Just let me know that you guys, you guys want that. Like, I'm, I'm, movie content will be, I think, the main thing for this channel. But I want gaming to be a part of this as well. Because before, like I said, it was just that one Minecraft series that I abandoned like 10 episodes in. And, you know, I barely did anything with it. And, you know, then for the next few years after that, I focused mainly on movies. And that will be still my, the, the main part of this channel. But I want to, I want, I want to show another side of me. So, if you guys want that gaming content, let me know in this in the comment section of either this video or any of my videos or even any of my social medias. Just let me know that you guys want that sort of content and I am willing on getting the stuff that I need to do that. Um, one of my friends even suggested me to, um, he's even helping me with certain things on how to build a PC so I can give you guys that content. So... Again, if you guys want this gaming content, like, all you gotta do is tell me, and I am willing on doing it, because I'm, I don't want to do something for the channel that I like doing, but it's not gonna satisfy either the majority or everyone in my audience. Like, that, that feels like that, you know, that, that, that just feels like, the, like, what's the point of me making it? So, if you guys want, like, I, 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 I'm sorry for sounding like a broken record, but if you guys want me to do gaming, gaming content on this channel, let me know. And I, I'm willing on doing it. Like, I, I want to let this side of me come out and express myself. But I just never really found, you know, the motivation and to do it and I never really felt like anyone would really care but now I I want this side of me to be you know apparent so if you guys want this stuff this kind of content on my channel let me know in the comment section or on any of my social medias it is it it, it will help me make a better future for myself and with that being said thank you guys for watching this probably over an hour worth of content honestly at this point we're probably at like an hour and 20 so like this is um this is this was a big video like but not necessarily big this is just me just expressing myself and you know talking about things that you know i want to talk about and want to you know express but you know it does seem like that you know I, I feel that with the personality I put on this channel, it feels like I'm restraining myself. But I want to be more open with it. So, maybe I won't be doing this content all the time, but maybe doing these videos every once in a while gives me that opportunity to kind of let myself out and really kind of express myself. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon to get notified when future videos are coming out. As I mentioned earlier in this video, all my social medias will be down in the description below. My Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Twitch page, my Letterbox page, uh, my Discord server. If you guys want to join that, that will be also in the description below. And uh, if you guys want to support my channel that little bit extra, uh, go and check out my throne page and you know possibly buy a gift. You know, it's not mandatory, but if you guys want to, you know, uh, help me. Uh, support my dreams I'll let I'll you know I'll let you guys know that I do care and I will you know be giving shout outs if that ever does happen at some point but you know that will be a you know you know I don't know when that's gonna happen but if you guys want to support my channel that a little bit extra further go and check out my throne page and possibly buy a gift you know 
And honestly, like I said, it's not a mandatory thing. I only put that up because, you know, you know, it, it, I guess that's, you know, my way of doing kind of like a Patreon sort of thing at this current time. So, you know, because obviously I think Patreon requires like a monthly bill or some shit like that, which obviously I can do. So, this is kind of like my, my version of Patreon, but it's not mandatory. So, yeah. But anyway, uh... Hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for hopefully either this Friday or Saturday for my review of Bullet Train. Hope you guys have a fantastic day and stay tuned for the next video. Live long and prosper. Out.